So I woke up in my back garden the other day with an inflatable llama in one hand and a bloodstained shovel in the other when a thought occurred to me. It's really annoying when writers drastically alter an established character just to make them fit with the story they have in mind instead of tweaking the story to make it consistent with the character. It's lazy and disrespectful and it makes it hard to buy into the film because it's very obvious that you're being manipulated by writers that don't have the skill or the motivation to balance story and character development. So with that in mind, I'm going to start a new series that I'll be doing from time to time. The Drinker Fixies. In each episode, I'll take a character or plot thread that I consider to be badly executed and rework it into something that achieves the same objective but does it in a way that's more faithful to what came before. Now, as tempting as it might be to rewrite an entire movie to fit my twisted desires, it would also be kind of cheating. So the rule here is that I have to keep the same basic plot structure and character arc. All I can do is tweak some of the details. So let's begin, shall we? And what better place to start than Fat Thor from Avengers Endgame? Now, don't get me wrong, Endgame was a reasonably good movie that brought a satisfying end to the Infinity Saga, and it's probably the last decent Marvel flick we'll get for quite a while. But one thing that really fell down for me was the treatment of Thor. The proud Asgardian warrior and literal god of thunder had been reduced to a fat, drunken, shambolic idiot that plays video games, dresses like the Big Lebowski, suffers panic attacks, cries like a little girl, and passes out in the middle of important briefings. And it all just seemed a little… off. Like they ignored his years of character development and totally altered his personality for the sake of some cheap laughs. Now, in order to understand what kind of character Thor should be in Endgame, we have to first consider what led him here. Who is this man? Where does he come from? What kind of personality does he have? And how has it changed over time? In a nutshell, Thor is the son of Odin, the god of thunder, and the prince of the galaxy-spanning civilization known as Asgard. He's a mighty superhuman warrior who can take on practically anyone, and he's been raised from birth knowing that one day he'll be king. Unfortunately, this life of privilege and power has also made him into an arrogant dickhead. He's headstrong and overconfident, he rushes into conflict without thinking things through, and he clashes with his more mature and diplomatic father. You are a vain, greedy, cruel boy, and you are an old man and a fool! In short, he's a powerful but deeply flawed man that's never really had to face hardship or take responsibility for his actions. As a result, he gets banished to Earth and his powers are taken away. He's forced to live as a mortal man, and in the process, he learns humility, maturity and self-sacrifice, until eventually he proves himself worthy of regaining his powers. In the second movie, he loses his mother and, it seems at the time, his brother Loki. He even declines Odin's offer to take the throne of Asgard, because he recognises he's not ready for the position yet. He's self-aware enough to understand his own flaws and limitations and realise that he still has to grow and mature before he'll be ready to rule. Then in Thor Ragnarok, he loses just about everything. His father, his hammer, his eye, even Asgard itself. He's forced to rebuild himself from the ground up, finding the strength and resolve within himself to defeat his enemy and save his people. And in the end, he rightfully takes his place as the ruler of the Asgardian people, finally accepting the responsibility he's earned. The common thread running through all of this is that each of these movies is about taking something away from Thor. His powers, his mother, his father, even his hammer. Each of these things may have helped him in life, but by propping him up, they've ultimately held him back from the more meaningful personal growth that comes from hardship and adversity. With the loss of these external supports, Thor is forced to recognise his own flaws and become his own man, learning important traits that will one day serve him well as ruler. Humility, empathy, maturity, compassion, self-sacrifice, determination, stoicism, and the ability to think before acting. The point here is that Thor is a very different man by the end of Ragnarok than he was when we first met him. He's grown and matured into a wiser and better man, becoming stronger because of the hardships and losses he's endured. This is called a character journey. 
Then along came Infinity War. The movie kicks off with Thor's ship under attack by Thanos, who kills a bunch of Thor's people, defeats the Hulk, and disables Thor himself. Thor can do nothing but watch as his brother Loki is murdered right in front of him. This puts Thor on a path of revenge, and he forges a new war axe for himself that's capable of killing Thanos. When he shows up at the climax of the movie, he's able to badly injure Thanos, but it's still not enough to prevent the snap. And well, we all know what happens next. Then we get to Endgame. Thor and the others are able to track Thanos down to his retirement planet, and they proceed to lay the smack down on him with great vengeance and furious anger. Thor even gets to deliver the finishing blow, but it's all for nothing. Their victory is meaningless because they're too late to undo what happened. This is where it all starts to go wrong narratively. The next time we see Thor is five years later and he's living in New Asgard, which is basically a tiny coastal village in Norway. Broken by his failure, he's become a complete wreck of a man. Depressed, emotionally unstable, overweight and completely without purpose. He's got no interest in leading his people in their time of greatest need and he spends his days yelling at people over the internet. When Banner tries to recruit him with the possibility of undoing what's happened, he's not interested. He's afraid to leave, afraid to try again, afraid to hope. When he does finally agree to come along, he's a useless bumbling idiot for most of the movie. He's basically treated as the butt of a running joke that nobody even asked for. It's not until he reunites with his mother that he begins to pull himself together again. And at the end of the film, he decides that he's not fit to rule Asgard after all, and pawns off the responsibility to someone more diverse. Then he leaves so he can fuck around with the Guardians of the Galaxy. Now, based on everything that I've just told you about him, does this really seem like a logical way for Thor to behave? After all the hardships he's endured, the challenges he's overcome, the things he's lost and the personal growth he's been forced to go through, does Thor really seem like the kind of guy who would collapse like a house of cards because he failed to do the thing that everyone else also failed to do? Or does this all seem a bit forced. Like the writers totally changed his character and ignored all his previous development to make it fit with what they wanted to happen in this movie. This is what I like to call slow burn stupidity. It doesn't leap out at you straight away like an obvious plot hole or some crazy event that makes no sense, but it creates this gnawing feeling in the back of your mind that something isn't quite right. A feeling that slowly grows the more you think about it. That's usually a sign that someone is acting out of character. So how do we go about about fixing this. Well, we do know some basic stuff about Thor that we can use as the foundation of our new version. 1. He feels guilty because of his failure to stop Thanos. 2. He's reluctant to help the Avengers at first, but eventually he comes around. 3. His encounter with his mother is what helps him to heal and forgive himself. 4. He passes on the mantle of leadership to someone else at the end of the film. So let's break this down, starting with point number 1. Like each of the Avengers, Thor feels a deep sense of personal responsibility for his failure to stop Thanos. This is natural and it makes sense, but the question is, how would this guilt manifest for a man like Thor? Well, we know that he's now the king of Asgard, and we know that at least some of his people survived the events of Infinity War, but they've been left homeless and desperate by what's happened to them. They need a leader, and I think this is a logical place for Thor to turn his energy. Rather than retreating into drinking, junk food and self-pity, Thor should become focused, almost obsessive about protecting what's left of his people and rebuilding everything that was lost. Instead of a rustic village, I think he would have built new Asgard into a heavily defended fortress nation, shut away from the outside world. The population have become warlike and aggressive. This version of Thor has become a perverted version of the just and fair ruler he aspired to be. He's driven, ruthless and cold-hearted, viewing everything and everyone outside New Asgard as a threat to his people. This change in personality would also feed more logically into point number two, his reluctance to help the Avengers. In his mind, he's obsessed with protecting what little he has left, and he's not prepared to risk it on the slim chance of changing the past. His encounter with Banner 
Banner could spiral into a violent confrontation where we get to see a glimpse of Thor's anger and inner pain. Only when he has a chance to calm down does some element of his former personality resurface, convincing him that maybe their plan is worth a shot, although he remains cold and aloof towards the others. Which brings me to point number three, his encounter with his mother and his redemption. This could play out mostly as before, except this time around Thor wouldn't be a shambling overweight joke that totally undermines what's supposed to be a poignant and emotional scene. His encounter with a past version of his mother would allow him to finally admit to the pain and guilt of his failure, helping him to move past it and at last forgive himself. This is where he'd finally let go of his driven and ruthless persona, and it could also give him a chance to apologise to his fellow Avengers for pushing them away. Emotionally whole once more, Thor goes into his final battle against Thanos as a complete man, determined to stop his enemy, but no longer weighed down by the guilt of his failures. This would bring us to Thor's final decision to hand over leadership of Asgard. In the original movie, Thor concludes that he's just not cut out for leadership and that someone more worthy of the role ought to take over so he can find a new path in life. This seemed kind of dumb to me, considering his entire character arc up to this point was all about him learning the skills and personality traits needed to be a good leader so he'd be worthy and prepared when he finally became king. Again, it's an example of the movie ignoring his previous development to make him do what the plot needed him to. But whatever, it's got to happen so let's think of a better way to do it based on the new and improved Thor. In our version, Thor is finally at peace with himself and his past. Reflecting on his hard and ruthless leadership over the past five years, he realises that although he was able to protect his people from outside threats, he also lost sight of who they really were. Driven by his obsession with being a strong leader, he changed them into something they weren't supposed to be. Realising that his people needed a home of their own where they can heal and rebuild, he leaves in search of a new world for them to settle on, asking Valkyrie to watch over them until he returns. He's still their ruler and he hasn't shirked his responsibilities just because they're inconvenient now, but he's got a new mission and a new purpose that allows him to go on further adventures without giving up everything he's achieved. Now, I'm not about to pretend that this is the only way to write Thor's character, or that everything I've just described would play out perfectly on screen, but it should at least demonstrate how a few relatively small changes to a character can totally change their perception in a story. It's possible to have them do just about anything, as long as their motivations and behaviour are consistent with what we know about them. And as inconvenient as it might be to your story, you can't just ignore everything a character did and accomplished. A smart writer finds a way to work around it. This is what I think was lacking in Endgame, mostly out of a misplaced desire to shove in some goofy humour, and it's something I've tried to put right here. But what do you think? Does this version work better, or should we stick with fat goofy clown Thor? Or is there another character you'd like to see me fix? Anyway, that's all I've got for today. Go away now.